All right. Welcome. My name is Alex Jackson. I'll be walking through some blood clotting pathways. Um, but I'm going to take a bit of a problems-based approach to this uh, phenomenon in the human body. So come on and join me. So first off, blood standing or blood clotting is called hemostasis. So hemo meaning blood, stasis meaning standing or standing still specifically. Now, if we think about blood, uh, we think about it as this nutrient-rich uh, red blood cells and plasma and white blood cells and all this really good stuff to nourish tissues, to provide good defenses to infections and so forth and so on. However, this only works when our circulatory system is working well and is closed off. Now, when it's compromised, that poses an issue, right? Because if we don't have this blood flowing through the vessels we need to flow through, death could occur from the smallest of tissue damage. You'd get a small little cut on a finger and it just would not stop bleeding. All the blood would eventually pool out of that small cut in your finger. So our bodies have adapted a response and evolutionarily, um, which is called blood clotting. And I'm going to say that there are three major goals in the body uh, when responding to this type of compromisation of our uh, blood vessels. Number one is to divert blood uh, from the ruptured vessels and almost to render that vessel um, unusable slightly. Um, and then the second goal is to form an immediate temporary plug. And then finally, to prevent blood from exiting the body through clotting and reinforcement, uh, thus allowing that vessel to uh, work its way through uh, better when blood is not exiting that space. And if we think about it, this is very similar to a roadway. Think about um, when a giant hole uh, begins gaping in the middle of a street uh, and it needs to be filled right away. So first you address the traffic issue. You get traffic away from that area. You fill it as soon as you can so that you can uh, re-enlist that roadway. And then you eventually make a long-term solution, whether it's filling back in the concrete or so forth. So let's go through step one. This is diverting blood or slowing down the entry into the compromised vessel. Um, so first, the cause of this diversion uh, or the diversion of blood is vascular spasm, Spas spasm being constriction. So if we think about a uh, vasoconstriction of a blood vessel, usually it increases the blood pressure, um, thus propelling the blood through more, but this actually uh, constricts in such a way that blood is kind of diverted and the smooth muscle of the blood vessels that are um, surrounding those vessels uh, will allow um, less blood flow through it. Um, now, yes, it will have a higher pressure, but it also minimizes blood loss because less blood can flow through it at any given point. Um, so it's a really interesting first step. It's kind of like uh, if you think about you have like a really stretched out tube and if you like a plastic, for example, and if you just cut it a little bit, it'll completely deflate and constrict, uh, which would disallow things from flowing through it very well. That's very similar um, to blood vessels when they are ruptured. Now, step two is to create an initial platelet plug. And you've probably heard of platelets before, but they're uh, cell fragments. And they do several, several things. And we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, but they first, in the first step of plugging, um, pl these platelets will adhere to the exposed collagen. You see when uh, vessels are ruptured, you'll see here in a picture in a couple of the slides, you can see this exposed collagen site right here. So as soon as there's an injury to this endothelium of the blood vessels, um, this collagen will be exposed. And that has these von Willebrand factors, which acts as glue for the platelets, which is really nifty. So as soon as this collagen is exposed, these factors, which are proteins, act as this sort of adhesive for the platelets to coagulate on this open area of collagen. Now, as soon as they do this, there's a positive feedback loop. Um, where several platelets will start secreting ADP, that's adenosine diphosphate and thromboxane A2. And these secretions specifically attract more platelets to the damaged site, so we're trying to recruit more things to make a bigger plug, and it disallows bad clotting in other healthy epithelium cells and endothelium cells, and that's insanely important. And I'll show you that here in the next slide. Um, but what I said was this is a positive feedback loop. The more platelets we have secreting these two molecules, 
the more uh, this damaged site will uh, get platelets and eventually plug. So let's look at a diagram of this. So platelets are coagulating here on the exposed collagen thanks to the von Willebrand factors, as we see. Um, think of this as a blood vessel. So all these, this blood is flowing uh, through this vessel. Here's the vessel wall, the vessel lumen, which is the inside. And here's the interstitial fluid that's surrounding the blood vessels. These platelets are going to slowly coagulate and combine here and kind of stick together really nicely. And then these two secretions are happening. And these two secretions, in turn, disallow platelets from binding and gluing themselves to normal endothelium. They only will bind to places with exposed um, collagen on the ruptured sites, which is incredibly important if you think about a cut. If you start having clotting happening down here and down here, eventually this tissue that is being uh, served by all these vessels are going to die. Um, the blood is not going to get to them, and then that tissue will die. And so it's really important and also that we don't make a giant plug here um, that actually plugs up the vessel. So these normal endothelium cells will start secreting prostacyclin nitric oxide to prevent these platelets from um, kind of binding here. And that's only with the ADP and the thromboxane A2 that induces endothelium cells to secrete these two um, chemicals, thus inhibiting platelet aggregation. What's interesting here is prosta, prostaglandin is usually something that um, attracts, it's like a chemical attraction, um, but in this case it's actually disallowing these uh, platelets from forming there. So it's just an interesting note. Now some things about platelets that we should know um, in terms of plugging and clotting um, is that first off, they also enhance the vascular spasm that originally happened uh, at the site of the injury by releasing vasoconstricting factors, so different proteins that allow those vessels to contract even more. Uh, so they help with that aspect of it to reduce the blood flow. And they also have complexes of actin and myosin within the platelets themselves, which if you don't know what actin and myosin is, they are usually in muscle cells where it's the sliding filaments, but in this case, it allows the platelets to actually um, flatten out to be flexible, to contract. Um, so it's almost a strengthening aspect of these plugs that are being formed that helps with the um, physiological need to have the plug in general. You want to have a strong plug like a cork rather than something like a piece of tissue paper, right? So the stronger, the better here. And then also we'll see here in a couple uh, schematic diagrams that platelet factor 3, PF3, um, aids in the conversion of specialized enzymes to create blood clots. And this is our final goal, is to really clot the blood so that no other blood can get out um, into just the world, <laughs> I suppose, um, or into the interstitial fluid in this case. Um, so let's look at where PF3 um, is and how blood clotting occurs in two different forms. So there are two pathways, intrinsic and extrinsic. The first one is intrinsic, and it's in response to blood exposed to collagen on the luminal side of the endothelium. In other words, it's when blood is exposed to collagen here inside the endothelium, so inside the blood vessel cells. And then extrinsic is a very short response, and it happens faster when it's actually exposed to the interstitial tissues, which is obviously a bigger cut. So this extrinsic pathway will happen when there's a bigger cut um, where it's actually being exposed into the interstitial fluid right here. And that means that this is a really compromised ves vessel and a very compromised tissue, tissue most often. So it makes sense why it wants to be fast. And I put just a couple things up here that the final goal of clotting, the thing that finally like finalizes the net that will be formed in the clotting is this conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and converting fibrinogen, uh, which are these inactive stretch, stretchable fibers, to fibrin, which are stronger. It's like a spider web contracting that will actually trap these blood cells into the clot, which successfully form the clot. So let's look at those pathways real quick. One thing I want you to know before we walk through it step by step is that these Roman numerals, you know, scientists aren't very nice sometimes, and this is actually the order by which these factors were founded. So as you can see, factor seven here, Hegeman factor, 
comes before factor six because factor six was found out before factor seven. So that's just a trippy thing. I wouldn't worry about memorization, but the important thing is understanding this pathway in general and being able to interpret this diagram. Uh, so let's take a vessel surface. Uh, it's damaged. We got some exposed collagen on the endothelial side. Um, so a minor cut most often. Uh, this will activate this interactive factor seven and in turn will be a cascade activating the factor six. Once calcium ions flow through, it will <laughs> once again activate factor nine. So that was the ninth factor that was found out. So this is a very common, um, you see this in secondary messenger synthesis and calcium Ions are actually a common secondary messenger, several different things. So here it is acting as a secondary messenger, relaying a signal that, hey, this is a damaged surface. So I cut off this picture here because it's going to start going into the extrinsic pathway, which is the same in both, but intrinsic is a little longer with these Hageman factor and active factors being um, activated first. And as you can see, the main thing going into the extrinsic pathway is these calcium ions again factor 8, which will be activated, and there's our fun plate lake factor 3 that we mentioned here in a second, or a few seconds ago. And now we have the extrinsic pathway when really we have a big compromise of tissue, and this is when tissue thromboplastin will be secreted. This is factor 3 combined with calcium ions in factor 7, which we saw earlier, but this will almost <laughs> uh, skip this activation of factor seven because factor seven will automatically be activated um, with that big of tissue damage. And then we have this cascade of events and you can walk through this in your own time. But what I really want you to derive from this is that as soon as calcium factor five and platelet factor three are initiated with active factor 10, Here's our prothrombin, also called factor two, that turns into thrombin, which eventually activates fibrin to form a stabilized meshwork. But that's only after fibrinogen factor one is initiated by thrombin as well. So thrombin and fibrin, which is what I mentioned earlier, is our final goals because it will eventually trap the blood cells in a mesh light network, disallowing any more blood to flow out. So once again, these are two very uh, similar pathways, extrinsic being shorter and in, uh, intrinsic turning into the extrinsic. But the main goal here is to activate these two um, factors here, thrombin. And you've probably heard of uh, thrombocytes or like thrombosis when you have like a clot uh, moving. So thromb means kind of a uh, group uh, together. So a coagulation of blood or like a net uh, mesh-like network of blood with fibrin, which you've probably heard of fibers before, which are long stringy uh, meshworks. And then it tightens up to make that clot. And you can kind of see a little picture of what that clot would look like. A lot of spider webby uh, strings allowing these blood cells to stay within them really successfully. So that is a very quick and brief overview of the clotting process. Once again, if we think back, those three major goals, the first goal is to divert the blood from that area so that the blood loss is minimized by uh, vasoplasm uh, or ves vesic vesicular, sorry, <laughs> vesicle, uh, oh, my, my, vessel, vessel, that's the word, um, vessel constriction. The second goal will be to plug the initial site of injury, and that happens with platelets, and then finally to make thromb thrombin and fibrin, eventually making a mesh-like network to really secure that area and disallow any blood um, from pooling out of the body or into the interstitial fluid. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.